they are not in favour. Pallavi, let's talk about two films uh, in this context of the censor board, since you mentioned the censor board. One was Pathan that uh, went on to garner a lot of numbers at the box office and did wonders, uh, actually brought the industry back from the slump that it was uh, witnessing post-pandemic. Despite that, the centre board did step in because of certain factions and certain political parties seeing red uh, over a particular song in the film. They wanted the makers to go ahead and snip certain portions of that song. That was done. Do you think after this letter that's been written by the Cine Workers Association to the Prime Minister nonetheless, is it going to be getting the censor's board's role back uh, into the purview considering the board has passed the film. Now will they be looking and re-looking the film, probably asking the makers and suggesting certain cuts? So there are two things over here. First of all, in the case of Pathan, is the censor board which stepped in and the censor board gave that direction to a filmmaker that keep in mind the sentiments of the people as far as that particular Deepika Padukone song is concerned. And that's where the action was taken on the direction of the censor board. The government did not step in. Hmm. What I'm saying in the context of Adi Purush is that despite the request going to the Prime Minister and to the INB Minister, they don't want to step in. They would rather leave the matter to a censor board. Yet on paper, the censor board is supposed to be a autonomous but it usually works in sync with the INB ministry and to the government hmm. like I guess it, it always has been. So maybe that nudge goes into a censor board that you really have to relook because this debate and controversy over the movie doesn't seem to be hmm. dying down and this also amidst the fact that the fortunes or rather the revenue for the hmm. movie also seems to be now falling despite the fact that the pre-release opening figures were extremely high and there was huge expectation from hmm. the movie. Alright, thank you so much for that. Uh, Pallavi, let's uh, with that shift now our focus to a very, very high profile visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's as he has flown off to the United States of America as he's been invited for a state visit there. A very uh, significant one. We have our eyes on that story and let's take a look at more. values between the two countries are so significant, share values like democracy, rule of law, a market economy, American citizens who are of Indian descent, uh, they have continued to contribute uh, to the improved relations between the United States and India. Countdown to Prime Minister Modi's visit to the United States of America is over. Prime Minister left for the United States this morning. And ahead of his departure today, the Prime Minister shared details about his visit. In fact, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will first be participating in International Yoga Day at uh, UN headquarters, where delegates from 195 countries will uh, be doing yoga along with him. He will then fly down to Washington, D.C., where he will be hosted by President Joe Biden and the First Lady at the White House, followed by participation at an event for skill development and capacity building. Prime Minister Modi will also be meeting with the CEOs of American multinational companies. In fact, the Prime Minister will also address the American Parliament and the diaspora events uh, will also follow, and this includes meeting with prominent Americans. Prime Minister Modi is also, uh, in fact, he's put out a statement where he said that he is confident that his visit to the U.S. will reinforce Indian ties based on shared values of democracy, diversity and freedom. 15-16 hour direct flight from Delhi to New York. He should land sometime uh, midday tomorrow is what we are told, after which uh, there is a bunch of meetings with CEOs who are based out of New York. Uh, that's going to happen uh, through the course of the second half of the day once the Prime Minister lands here tomorrow. Uh, but the main uh, aspect of his first leg, which is in New York, is going to come on Wednesday uh, when we have the International Day of Yoga. It's an event where media persons like us, we've been asked to gather at 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, the formal event itself will happen from 8 o'clock in the morning where the Prime Minister will be leading 
Uh, we're given to understand over a hundred people will be there live at the north lawns of the UN headquarters, which is here in the Upper East Side of New York City, uh, just overlooking the river. Uh, they will be doing yoga along with the Prime Minister. Uh, he will be there for a few hours uh, and about 11 o'clock in the morning on that day, Wednesday, he will then head to Washington where again he's got a series of uh, meetings with CEOs, industry leaders, community leaders uh, through the rest of the day on, on uh, Wednesday, which is the 21st. So it's a big week clearly for Indian diplomacy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is undertaking his first ever state visit to the United States in his nine years as Prime Minister. Remember, he's been here six times in the last uh, nine years ever since he assumed Prime Ministership. But this is the first time that he will be the recipient of all the pomp and ceremony and the grandeur of a state visit. There's going to be the state banquet that's going to be hosted at the White House. That's going to happen on Thursday. But before that, first he comes here to New York City, to the Big Apple. He will be leading the Yoga Day celebrations at the UN headquarters, which is on the Upper East Side, the iconic UN headquarters building at 6 a.m. New York time. Prime Minister Modi, along with diplomats, including the UN GA president, the United Nations Security Council Secretary General, all of them uh, will be part of the Yoga Day celebrations that's going to happen on Wednesday, 6 a.m. local time uh, here in New York City. Also, a whole bunch of substantive deals, particularly in defense technology, are going to be signed. The big one, of course, being the uh, GE jet engine deal uh, for the 414 uh, GE jet engines, which are going to be manufactured in India. There's going to be a great degree of technology transfer as well as part of that deal. We're given to understand that by value, close to 80% of value of uh, the uh, jet engine will be transferred and the technical know-how will be transferred uh, to the Indian counterparts. Also, the other big deal in the defense uh, realm, which is expected, uh, happens to be the Predator armed drone drill deal. Now, remember, the Predator drones are something that the U.S. has very successfully deployed uh, in the heartlands of Afghanistan against the Taliban, uh, also operating on the terrorists uh, who are operating from Pakistan. So it's been a very successful uh, defense component of the U.S. military relationship. They've been using this since the late 2000s. And for the very first time, they are extending this technology to India. We are given to understand that all three services, the Army, Navy, and the Air Force, have expressed interest in buying uh, some numbers of the Predator armed drones. Uh, we don't know the exact number or the value of this deal. That will likely be revealed through the course of this week. But I think it's going to be substantive that for the first time, an unmanned aerial vehicle deal of this nature is being signed between the United States and India. And of course, the commercial partnership will also be extended. There are a whole bunch of CEOs that the Prime Minister will be meeting, both here in New York as well as, of course, uh, in, uh, in Washington, D.C. He will also be taking part in a U.S. IPF uh, uh, event as well. So it's going to be a packed itinerary for the Prime Minister over the next three days, uh, both here in New York as well as in Washington, D.C. So it's a big week for Indian diplomacy. Prime Minister Modi is going to be here in uh, New York as well as in Washington, D.C. For the first time in nine years under his prime ministership, he's going to be invited for a state visit. Uh, two critical issues, geopolitical issues, that are going to dominate the conversation. Uh, one, of course, the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. Remember, the Ukrainian president has also reached out to India to play some kind of a mediator role to try and use its leverage, use its influence with President Putin and Russia to try and broker some kind of a ceasefire. That is definitely going to be a topic of conversation when Prime Minister Modi and U.S. President Biden meet. Uh, and they will be meeting over multiple occasions through the course of this week. There is a private dinner that's going to happen Wednesday night. And then, of course, on Thursday night, there is the state banquet as well. He will also get a chance to interact with Vice President Kamala Harris and Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. That's going to be over a working lunch on Friday. But the Russia-Ukraine war is a very, very big backdrop uh, for this conversation. And also remember, India is hosting the big G20 summit in early September. So it's going to be something that is absolutely critical because uh, the joint communique uh, solely depends or to a great extent depends on all 20 countries being able to agree on the language and the texting of the joint communique. Remember last year in Bali, in Indonesia, uh, when that country hosted the G20, uh, the negotiations went on for a number of hours and finally at the end hour, uh, they were able to negotiate a draft that was acceptable to all countries, uh, including of course to Russia and to China. Whereas this year, in the previous meetings that we have seen, whether it was the foreign minister's meeting that happened in Delhi back in March or whether it was the finance minister's meeting that happened in Bangalore, the G20 leaders were not able to arrive at a consensus on the draft 
language, uh, particularly vis-a-vis -vis the Russia-Ukraine war. In fact, the external affairs minister said on 99% of the issues, we had agreement, we had consensus. There was one issue which we could not, and that, of course, was the Russia-Ukraine war. The other big issue of uh, discussion will be, of course, China. India has its own internal uh, problems uh, with China vis-a-vis -vis what happened from April 2020 with Galwan and the change of the status quo as it were and of course that is something that India is dealing with. It's pushing back against Chinese aggression at the line of actual control but also in the wider Indian Ocean region. India is of course uh, an active member of the Quad. We recently had uh, the Quad leaders meeting that happened on the sidelines of the G7 in Hiroshima but how can the Quad be more actualized uh, in terms of preparedness for any kind of a uh, military confrontation. Not necessarily uh, between these four countries and China, but for example on Taiwan, where for China a, a, they consider it a, a core interest of theirs, but at the same time the rhetoric has been raised to such a high level by the Chinese that uh, it seems like, and this is the perception amongst uh, geopolitical experts and geostrategy experts, that it might be difficult for Xi Jinping not to be seen as uh, taking some kind of a proactive, maybe even a military uh, measure to try and uh, reunify Taiwan and he'll have to do that uh, before the end of his current tenure. So all of this will form the backdrop, geopolitical backdrop certainly, uh, when conversations happen between US President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Modi during the course of uh, this diplomatic visit. Pradhan Mantri Modi ke New York aane ke pehle jo yaha sama bandha hai, iske baare mein janenge hum log uh, is uh, ऑनेस्ट रेस्टोरेंट में जिसके सारे चेन गुजरात भर में मौजूद हैं और यहाँ पर यहाँ पर इस ऑनेस्ट चेन में इसका क्या खास है प्रधानमंत्री मोदी के आने का क्या उत्साह है ये जानने की हम लोग कोशिश करेंगे अगर प्रधानमंत्री जी आ रहे हैं हाँ हाँ प्रधानमंत्री तो आ रहे हैं लेकिन हम भी तैयारी करके रखे हैं भाई साहब हमने तो एक यहाँ पे हमारे रेस्टोरेंट में मोदी थाली करके हमने तो इंट्रोडक्शन किया मोदी थाली क्या हाँ जी हाँ जी ये देखिए सर जी ये पूरा मोदी थाली जो है ये मोदी के लिए हमने एक थाली बनवाई है स्पेशली गुजराती मोदी थाली जो इतनी प्रख्यात है मोदी साहब जो खाते हैं ना मतलब उस तरीके से पूरी थाली बनवाई है और यहाँ पे गुजराती लोग बहुत है तो लोग की हमारी चाहत थी कि सर आप क्यों मोदी थाली ना चालू करें बहुत उसमें स्ट्रेंथ है मतलब वो जो चीजें आप रखते हो ना तो मोदी जी भी खाते है और आप भी रखिए यहाँ पे तो हमारे दिमाग में कल आया यार क्यों ना कर जाए वैसे मैं देखा गुजराती थाली है या गुजराती थाली है या इस थाली में और भी व्यंजन होंगे सिर्फ गुजराती थाली कुछ मतलब गुजराती भी है और सारे चीजें हैं आप जैसे थाली देखोगे ना तो आपको पता चल ही जाएगा क्या क्या आइटम हम लोग कर रहे हैं यहाँ पे तो कई चीजें हैं हमारे लिए लेकिन हम बॉम्बे से मैं भी गुजरात से हूँ आई एम बिलोंग फ्रॉम बड़ोड़ा ऑल्सो तो मुझे प्राउड है कि हमारे मोदी पीएम साहब यहाँ आ रहे हैं और हम यहाँ कुछ ना करें न्यूयॉर्क में संयुक्त राष्ट्र संघ मुख्यालय के बाहर भारत का तिरंगा लहरा रहा है आखिर इस लहराते तिरंगे पर हर भारतीय को गर्व क्यों न हो खासकर अमेरिकन समुदाय को 21 जून को संयुक्त राष्ट्र द्वारा घोषित विश्व योगा दिवस मनाया जा रहा है और इस बार योगा दिवस काफी मायनों में बहुत खास है क्यूँकी इस बार खुद प्रधानमंत्री मोदी यूनाइटेड नेशन संयुक्त राष्ट्र के इस मुख्यालय पर आकर योग करेंगे और इस योग की खास बात यह है की प्रधानमंत्री मोदी के ही इनिशिएटिव पर ये योग दिवस 14 21 जून को मनाया जाता है 21 जून काफी माने रखता है क्योंकि इस दिन माना जाता है कि साल का सबसे बड़ा दिन होता है उसके बाद ही दिन छोटे होने शुरू होते हैं और इस दिन योग को स्वास्थ्य से जोड़ते हुए भारत ने मांग की थी कि योग अब एक विश्व योग दिवस के रूप में इक्कीस जून को मनाया जाए काफी सांकेतिक था सिम्बोलिक था लेकिन काफी मान मनोबल के बाद प्रधानमंत्री के प्रस्ताव के बाद यूनाइटेड नेशन में तीन महीने के अंदर कम से कम एक देशों ने इस पर इस प्रस्ताव पर मंजूरी दे दी मजबूत मैं इस वक्त मौजूद हूँ न्यूयॉर्क शहर के तट पर लिबर्टी आइलैंड के पास बनी स्टैच्यू ऑफ लिबर्टी के सामने अठारह में बनी इस स्टैच्यू ऑफ लिबर्टी को 1924 में अमेरिकी सरकार ने एक नेशनल मॉन्यूमेंट घोषित किया था ये बहुत बड़ी उपलब्धि थी ये स्टैच्यू ऑफ लिबर्टी प्रतीक है अमेरिका की वैचारिक अभिव्यक्ति की स्वतंत्रता की अमेरिकी लोकतंत्र की और अमेरिका में जो आम नागरिकों को ताकत दी उसकी और यही ताकत प्रधानमंत्री मोदी भारत को दे रहे हैं और प्रधानमंत्री मोदी इसी ताकत को जो भारत के योग की ताकत थी जो दुनिया को दी भारत ने प्रधानमंत्री मोदी की अपील पर जो जून 21 को विश्व योग दिवस मनाया जाता है यूनाइटेड नेशन के ने इक्कीस जून को भारत विश्व योग दिवस घोषित किया है उसके बाद प्रधानमंत्री पहली बार 
इस बार न्यूयॉर्क में यूनाइटेड नेशन के सामने प्रधानमंत्री योग करेंगे इक्कीस की सुबह में एक देशों के प्रतिनिधि और डिप्लोमेट्स इसमें प्रोमिनेंट लोग इसमें हिस्सा लेने वाले हैं और प्रधानमंत्री मोदी इसके लिए न्यूयॉर्क पहुंच रहे हैं न्यूयॉर्क के और प्रधानमंत्री का दौरा वाशिंगटन का है वाशिंगटन में सबसे बड़ी उपलब्धि प्रधानमंत्री की होगी कि इस बार उनका ये स्टेट विजिट बहुत मायने रखता है आई एम फैन ऑफ द मोदी मुझे मोदी से इतना एक्साइटेड हम लोग दो तीन दिन रहने वाले यहाँ पे तीन दिन और यहाँ पे मोदी को सपोर्ट करने लिए मेन तो आज हम इसके लिए आए हुए हैं मोदी को सपोर्ट के लिए आई लव मोदी मोदी के लिए हम जान भी देने वाले हैं ऐसे आदमी है लोग पीएम साहब श्री मोदी आ रहे हैं उसके लिए हम बहुत एक्साइटेड है और हम यहाँ रुकने वाले हैं हम उसको सपोर्ट करने के लिए कुछ भी करने के लिए तैयार है यहाँ भी तीन दिन रुकने वाले हैं और मोदी के लिए बहुत सपोर्ट करने वाले है आई लव मोदी Let's shift focus now to the state of Karnataka, where a massive political face-off has erupted between the Congress and the centre over the government, state government's Annabhag scheme. Now, the Congress is staging massive protests in Mangaluru against the centre for allegedly restraining the Food Corporation of India from selling rice to Karnataka. The BJP, on the other hand, is also holding a counter-protest against the Grand Old Party in Bengaluru. In fact, Karnataka Chief Minister. The former Chief Minister of Karnataka, Basavraj Bomai, was detained during the protest. Remember, the Annabhagya scheme promises to offer 10 kilograms of rice to every member of the families who are living below poverty line in the state. However, the Congress has blamed the BJP and the central government for delaying in implementation of the scheme that has been announced by the Congress regime in Karnataka. Congress launching a massive protest today to protest against the union government which they call is handing out a stepmotherly treatment to the Karnataka government here by not allowing the FCI to sell rice to Karnataka to fulfill its ambitious Annabagya program here. Remember 5 kg is being given under Annabagya and one of the major guarantees of the Congress party is to increase it to 10 kg and now Karnataka scouting for rice. In fact, they have reached out to Telangana, Andhra government and even Punjab government as well. But it's only Chhattisgarh from where they have given, got some assurance of at least 1.5 lakh metric ton of rice being provided. Congress workers here, you can see, are cooking rice, protesting against the BJP government, the union government, saying that the union government wants to scuttle the Congress's ambitious Annabagya program. They're scared that it will bring popularity to the government. And in fact, damage the chances of the BJP in the 2024 Lok Sabha election. We have. It's an important protest to the Congress party. Do you think the message that you're trying to convey will reach to the people of Karnataka? Definitely. We are trying to reach the government of India. We are trying to reach the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who's the BJP government is doing politics. See, we want to purchase the rice. There is rice in the center. But because we had given a guarantee, five guarantees we had given. First guarantee, free bus pass for the women, the revolutionary program we have implemented. Second is uh, 10 kilos uh, rice for the poor people. We are not asking rice for the Congress party. We are asking the rice for the poor people of Karnataka. So we have promised them 10 kilos. Five kilos we wanted to purchase from the government of India, but they don't want to give. So that they let the blame come to Congress government in Karnataka. They are thinking of the elections of the Lok Sabha. The people of Karnataka are watching. We are, the, uh, definitely this message will go to the people of Karnataka as well as central government. We have 25 BJP MPs, 5 central ministers of Karnataka, powerful ministers. They should come to support of the Karnataka. They should not do politics in rice also. That's what we are uh, appealing to the Prime Minister this year. Today, after the protest, we are writing a letter to the Prime Minister to, go, to uh, see that rice is released for Karnataka. As well over the implementation of the Annabagya scheme in Karnataka escalates, the BJP workers and leaders have started protesting here in Bengaluru against the Sidramaya government. Now remember the whole role regarding implementation of the Annabagya scheme escalated after the FCI discontinued the sale of rice to the states under the OMSS. Now Sidramaya government accused the union government at this center led by the Modi, Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister, 
stating that it is doing uh, hate politics. That's the reason why uh, FBI has discontinued the sale of rice to the states under OMSS. Now, remember, uh, the BJP government at the very same time hit back at Sidramaya government by stating that Sidramaya government is now unable to implement the Annabagya scheme and that's the reason why they are uh, telling such lies and misleading the people of Karnataka. So now, as you can see in the visuals, for the very same reason, BJP leaders, former revenue minister and other party workers are staging, uh, staging protests here in Bengaluru and uh, in the 10 other centers here in Karnataka as well. As you can see in the visuals, they are holding placards which read the guarantees of the Congress doesn't have any warranty and they are misleading the people and did this just for votes and also all these schemes will be stopped uh, once the Lok Sabha election ends. भाजपा का कैंडिडेट नहीं है सौंदर्यकाली ब्लॉक फोर का मुंडोल फोर का प्रेसिडेंट हूँ मैं हमारे इधर बहुत सारे कैंडिडेट हैं मैं मुंडोल प्रेसिडेंट होने के नाते इधर मेरे को रहने का जिम्मेदारी है और क्या क्या हो क्या रहा है आप लोग क्यों घर क्यों नहीं जा रहे मेरे को घर जाने का तो बहुत सारा तकलीफ है पूरा सौंदर्यकाली ब्लॉक वन और ब्लॉक टू में तृणमूल का बहुत सारे रोहिंगा और माफिया पूरा ब्लॉक को रखा करके रखा है पूरा let me bring in the, my colleague Harish Padaya on the broadcast for more on the story. Harish, um, the fact that there are protests and counter-protests by, happening by both the Congress and the BJP, however, as per records, what was asked of the Food Corporation of India by the current dispensation in Karnataka was also agreed by the FCI. Uh, for uh, the, the, the amount of rice that was asked, 2.28 metric tons, I believe 2.22 was agreed by the FCI, FCI to be given to the state government in Karnataka. And then suddenly this directive of uh, excluding the states from the ambit of OMS's scheme really came in by the center. Why is the BJP really protesting? Because all the attempts of blocking the Annabhagya scheme uh, is, uh, is a claim that's been made by the, by the Congress party. Well, the BJP has two points. One, mm -hmm. they are saying that this change in policy of not selling either wheat or rice to states under OMS's direct scheme was taken much before this negotiation happened between the state government of Karnataka and okay. FCI. So they are saying the Congress is distorting this whole sequence of events, one. Second, they are saying how did the union government or how did the state government of Karnataka decide to go ahead with such a huge scheme without having negotiations or even talking to the Ministry of uh, Consumer Affairs can they just depend on the FCI? Now the Karnataka government says, well, when we implemented last time round as well, that rice was routed through the FCI. FCI is the relevant body to discuss and that's why we were talking to them. Now the BJP mounting pressure saying the state government should either procure rice from the state. Well, there is a challenge for Karnataka government there. Large parts of Karnataka, Karnataka does indeed uh, grow paddy and rice. That's yes. in Raichur and Sindhanur area. But then that's the superior quality. That's the Sona Masuri one. That mm -hmm. will cost the state government in excess of 50 rupees per kg. That will shoot the budget uh, to more than 10,000 crores. Remember, they have four of the key promises to complete. Or now BJP is saying uh, the BJP, uh, the Congress government here should give the money equivalent to 5 kg of rice to the people. The Congress says, well, that doesn't really ensure that people uh, get rice. Uh, that would once again increase the price in the open market. So they are in a fix. They are now dependent on uh, rice supply from Chhattisgarh and the state government also right now are uh, discussing it with Punjab on how much Punjab can uh, mm -hmm. in fact uh, give and also the kind of transportation costs that will come up. Also, Harish, uh, in fact, stay on with us. Ashok Gora of the BJP is with us on the broadcast. Mr. Gora, we are actually looking at both the aspects of this story that's coming out of Karnataka. Congress is protesting, claiming blocking of the Anyabhagya scheme by the center. BJP is protesting that the Congress promised more than what it could uh, really offer to the public in Karnataka. However, this one data that we have uh, learned has come out of the FCI is that the FCI did agree to go ahead and send the kind of rice quantity that was asked of it on the 12th of June. There were two letters that were sent to the Congress government in Karnataka. Why did they agree if the center's uh, directive of excluding the say, states under OMSS was already there? No, the point is, let us understand what does FCI do. FCI procures the rice as per 5 kg per person for the entire 142 crore population. Mm. Some state unilaterally goes and announces saying that I will give you 10 kg. Mm. And somebody says that like, you know, we will give you 25 kg. Mm. Can FCC, uh, can Food Corporation of India provide that kind, that kind, of, a, uh, that kind of a rice to everybody? 
and states make their own promises mm. and they show the sky and moon to the uh, moon to people of corrupt people of the state mm. can can the central government go against the rules which they have made for themselves who, who has made the rules congress congress has congress when they were in the ruling in 2005 mm. has made this kind of a rule saying that like you know it's 5 persons 5 kg per person for, per, per month right Hmm. and uh, how did they make the rule that is also because there is a standard community com- community health care by park and park which is internationally accepted so that book is a reference and why are they not understanding why are they getting adamant and saying that like you know we want from central government only what did hmm. they say they said that 10 kg rice we will provide hmm. and when they promised to the 10 kg rice there was no scientific data or scientific method that why are we supposed to pay why are we supposed to give 10 kg rice and even when sidramaiah was in ruling in 2013 to 2018 there is lot of pulpuration of the rice which happened only because it is which was it is led to the corruption hmm. so sidramaiah and gang is known for this and they have promised uh, promised and in fact like you know a lot of panels they have suggested they are saying that like you know the 14 kg uh, of grains what is required for a human being hmm. make that give 5 kg rice ra- ragi johar wheat and 5 kg of multi grains and like you know another 3 to 4 kg of uh, vegetables and no, fruits no mr goda i understood people. your point but my question to you is that if at all this was undoable hmm. why did the fci hmm. agree on giving them the 2.22 metric tons of rice that was asked of them why did that agreement See, really happen it. See, let us understand there is a chronologically what happened is on the 2nd of june because the monsoon was delayed in south kara south india mm. they had said that like you know we will we we, we, can, we cannot issue and there was a the, the central government the cabinet the cabinet minister and the concerned ministers mm. had taken a taken a call saying that we cannot we can, so when the states ask or if somebody private people ask we cannot distribute the rice this time and fci fci europe probably a clerical mistake or something whatever has happened and mm. we will central government is also looking into it that mm. why, why was such a letter issued and in fact we have a letters whatever was communicated from gok to sci and uh, and uh, gok has not written any letter to goi mm. government of india nothing no letter was written only sci was written sci only one letter was sent whereas goi goi government of india has taken a decision and the order was issued on 8th of june itself forget about anything else the letter of this gui as the uh, gok government of karnataka has written a letter on 12th mm. and letter was uh, and uh, whereas the government of india has as uh, as okay. big uh, saying that like you know we will not be able to give any extra rice to any mm. state or any any people and the instead of finding a better okay. alternative but mr ashok gora what we are given issue. to understand is it's only after a day that the karnataka government yeah. reached its agreement with the fci is when this directive by the government of the center really came in i will actually uh, uh, request you to re- uh, stay with us on the broadcast nizam fosdar of the congress party is also with us mr fosdar do you agree with the claims that the bjp really is making over this entire anubhagya scheme they are calling it unscientific it could never have been made possible and the fci is not uh really in uh, uh, they really cannot go ahead and pro- give the the state government so much of rice because they already decided that the state governments do not fall in the ambit of the oms scheme see uh, there's nothing that you can agree what bjp says hmm. what is the scientific and what is that unscientific hmm. it is an intent to support the poor Hmm. If, if the intent of supporting the poor is unscientific then the bjp has to resign and let the other parties handle these uh, you know the issues which are extremely pertinent to the people of the state hmm. as well as to the country when they speak about saying that hum masti 80 crore logon ko khana khilate hain is that not unscientific when we are saying we want to give 10 kg of rice mm. to the poor people who are under the poverty line who are struggling for two meals a day mm. when we are saying we would give it from the exchequers of the uh, state government mm. it becomes unscientific if this was told about if this was told or if this was suggested by mr modi the the same party would have said this is the master stroke mm. now tell me is this helping poor is becoming more of red tapeism Hmm. writing letters not writing letters why are they stopping the fci not to give the to not give the rice to the karnataka state we will pay for the rice hmm. we are okay to 
to bear the cost of it. Yes. We are okay to cut down the state budget for various reasons and give a rise to the poor. If this government is willing to do that, why is the BJP not allowing FCI or any other agency across the nation to provide a rise to the state of Karnataka? Mr. Fauza, there is another it's, claim that's coming in from the BJP. Brilliant. What they are also saying yes. is that in this case, when uh, this increase from five... Uh, uh, per kilograms per person was increased to 10 kilograms per person. The stakeholders who, who should have been taken into consideration, the deliberation should have happened with them, was not done by the Congress party and they've made these tall claims which they cannot, uh, you know, go ahead and fulfill. How do you choose to respond to those allegations, sir? Let, let the BJP, Mr. Prime Minister, hmm. the food corporation who the the the, uh, the food uh, you know basically the minister who is in charge of the FCI mm -hmm. and say it in writing and announce it to the nation that we cannot support the Karnataka government we will bring it from the other states we will bring it from the other countries and we will still serve the people of this uh, Karnataka state mm -hmm. let them tell it let Mr. Prime Minister say that we cannot give rights and we cannot support the state, the Karnataka state, whatsoever the reason. If we give one rupee or hundred rupees per kilo to them, let them tell that we cannot supply this rice to us. Mm. We will bring it from another state or from another country, and we will still give those ten kilos of rice to the people of Karnataka. So if the, the morality now stands with the, the BJP and the Prime Minister, whether they want to support the poor or not support the poor. If they are willing to support the poor, they simply need to sign the, the request letter sent by the state government and then simply agree to it and not make these saucy comments saying that it was written on 8th of June, 9th of June, okay. somebody did not see, somebody did not react. Some minister is not able to understand why this is scientific or unscientific. If one for a spokesperson is saying if this, hmm. if 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 the two niwale agar ek garib khaleta hai to unscientific ho jata hai, to unko likhne diye na. Let them write those things onto a paper, make a statement, put okay. a press conference, and then right. tell it Mr. to the Mr. Kozar, I have with me Ashok Gora of the BJP as well on the broadcast. Mr. Gora, would you like to respond to this? Yeah, yeah. Basically, see, I don't know uh, who is speaking. Let let them. Please read, there is a park and park, the two, two authors where the entire world has accepted for the community health care mm. what is written on that book. So without reading, just don't make political blame game here. I are coming and speaking in a TV is very easy, sir. Please read the book. I request Sidramaya son, who is a doctor, Yatindra, and Dr. Shukumar, D.K. Shukumar's brother-in-law, who is a doctor, Ranganath, who was also a faculty in a very established medical college in Karnataka. Please let them read this book. Who have they have read? In fact, it's a, it's a prescribed text for these two people who could have read this, this book. Let them read it and let them understand it. What they have promised is not, is, is, is not just a practically possible, but it's a Indra and Chandra. Meaning to say, they have promised the sky, which, 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 which government of India, when they were in the ruling from 2004, 2004 to 2014, they have made a rule that's 5 kg per person per month. And why did they make? There was a scientific study based on the certain lot of documentation. And based on that, mm. they have said that 5 kg per person per month. And which Modi government in India for the entire 142 crores of Indians is providing till date. And it will be provided till December 23 as already promised. And will be maybe continued as per the government decision and the resources what we have. That is point number one. Point number two is Karnataka government is just unnecessarily politicizing the issue instead of thinking about the alternative. They cannot go and make a promise. They, whatever they want, they cannot make a promise, poll promises. What they made, bus, what did they think? Did they think that like, you know, six lakh auto, auto drivers, what will they happen to them? And now, I welcome it. I'm not saying, I'm not going against that. But six lakh no, auto but drivers. Mr. Gorda, no, why are you quoting them? a book as a dictat? Uh, the state government can go ahead and put in any sort of guarantee which they deem necessary and which is of course not really costing the state exchequer too much. But blocking that, that it is another true. argument and uh, you know, claiming and quoting from a book saying that this is a prescribed text really cannot be done in the name of welfare. It's not. It's not. It's not like that. Let's mm. understand. If you want me to, if you want, let, let uh, we can even think about that. Mm. The Antyodaya scheme. Mm. What did Modi government do? Modi government said, irrespective of whatever it is, in Karnataka, ten lakh seventy thousand Antyodaya card holders with forty four lakh beneficiaries, we are mm. going to provide it to them. There is no mm. question on that. 
ओके एंड देन देर इज अ येलो कार्ड येलो कार्ड देर इज वन लैक वन क्रोर सेवेंटीन लैक येलो कार्ड होल्डर येलो कार्ड इन कर्नाटक विथ द नंबर ऑफ बेनिफिशरीज बींग फोर क्रोर्स वेरी क्लोज टू फोर क्रोर थ्री लैक थ्री क्रोर नाइंटी सेवन लैक्स सो दिस बेनिफिशरीज इज देर द क्वेश्चन कमिंग ओके now the the the, the there is lot of law, a lot of thing they saying that like you know government servants are in the yellow card and like you know car car, car owner is also in yellow card that's a different issue but we have to provide for all the people who are below the poverty line now suddenly uh was once one state like you know for the poll promise they say that like you know we'll give you 10 kg we'll give you 15 kg we'll okay. give you 20 kg what do you, how much do you All consume right. a hmm. person All right Mr Gora I uh, got your point uh, I'll have to unfortunately leave it that uh, we will continue the discussion through the course of the broadcast on CNN News 18 over the tussle between Congress and the BJP when it comes to the Anna Bhagya scheme in Karnataka let's actually took uh, take a look at uh, the deputy chief minister of Karnataka Mr DK Shivakumar as to what he had to say about this entire controversy we, we are committed to the people of Karnataka that we are going to provide 10 kg of free rice so central government bound duty is to give us to the rice not free we were paying them money they had agreed to supply rice now they have denied it so the double standard politics of bjp we are fighting against them we are protesting against them whatever may be the situation we are going to buy rice from the different states and we are going to honor our commitment whatever the five guarantees we had given to the people of karnataka whichever party they belong we are going to give them five rice and the free rice and the five guarantees will be given to them and on that note we are slipping into a very short break here on the broadcast news and updates continue on the other side stay tuned Uh, and so was there a slamming of Uthav Thakre as internationally uh, being chosen as one of the best chief ministers when he was the chief minister. From that background, now there is this fresh war of words that has erupted. Uh, we have seen Sanjay Rao put out a fresh tweet saying uh, that today's day should be marked as World Traitors Day in view uh, of uh, you know marking the day when all these people went away. So the war of words between both the facts. continues today we might see some protests in some parts especially in pune at least where the ncp has a strong hold ncp itself is going to hold a protest later in the day we might see protests uh, in mumbai as well but there is no official word on it as of now uh, but continuing with the war of words both uthav thakre as well as the ncp have said in the last few days uh that today is ostensibly the traitors day because today was the day when eknath shinde along with a bunch of mlas had jumped uh fences and had gone to surat back to you also vinaya do we have any reaction from the shinde sena on this traitors day remark oh well, for the last 2 to 3 days these remarks have been uh, uh, you know it and that is why we have seen uh, that eknath shinde himself while in his address uh on the foundation day uh, had spoken about it today as such there is no fresh response this is not a fresh war of words anyway for the last 2 to 3 days we have seen uh, these kind of reactions uh, go on and off and to that eknath chinde and his faction have also responded uh, slamming uthav uh, uthav thakre and his faction saying uh, that uh, you know we saw even on stage yesterday gajanan ke speaker spoke about it uh, saying that they should not really be called traitors because the reason why the previous government came down was not because of anybody else but because of the kind of troubles that the shiv sena faced at the hands of the ncp which was uh, taking away and extracting all the funds as well as not giving any prominence to the shiv sena and that was the main reason why uh, the uh mlas who felt stifled while sitting in the mahavikas aghadi had to actually leave and that was the main reason that should not uh, be neglected so we have seen response on this jibe come up from eknath shinde and his faction for the last 2 to 3 days as of today after sanjay raut tweet we haven't yet seen any response from them back to you 
Also, Vinaya, how is this going to impact the Shinde Sena's image given that assembly polls uh, are also around the corner next year uh, that are going to happen in Maharashtra? So, how is this going to uh, impact the party's image? Well, we have seen that uh, internally surveys that have been conducted by the Ekna Chinde group do not seem to be favorable for them as of now. They are completely aware that there is some amount of backlash because of the decision that they have taken and they will have to work their way through. So there is a clear recognition of the challenge because of the narrative that being used. Also, very clearly, Shivtena Uttar Thakre faction is playing the victim card and is claiming that, you know, time and again, these are the people who received them. We saw the same line that was taken up by Uttar Thakre as well in his foundation day speech yesterday, saying that, uh, you know, they have stabbed the womb of a mother, and that is how they have gone to all narrative building with respect uh, to the cadres and the general population, which has been a Shiv Sena follower, has been that the Uttar Thakre faction has been at the receiving end and that it has been the victim in this entire game. Now, unless that perception changes, it clearly remains to be a challenge for the Ekna Chinde faction, which it is fully aware of. And that is why we are seeing that despite all these accusations and counter-accusations, Ekna Chinde faction has been in full swing in order to make sure that several leaders of the Uttar Thakre faction jump on to the Ekna Chinde faction. Back to you. All right, Vinaya, please stay with us. Uh, we have Shiv Sena, UBT's uh, Anand Dubey joining us on the broadcast. Anand Dubey ji, thank you very much for joining CNN News 18. Se junne ke liye. Uh, aapki party has made a demand that uh, June 20th ko Traitors Day uh, declare kar dena chahiye. Is pe aap kya uh, dekhe, aisa, ki de aap what you want to say? Look, it's like that today is Vishnu's Yoga Divas. Today is Antarashtri Suraksha Divas. Today is Antarashtri Pariyavaran Divas. And so, what do we say? In this case, today is the day of Maharashtra, mein, एक ऐसी घटना घटी थी जो दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण थी एक रनिंग सरकार को कुछ लोगों ने षडयंत्र करके वेलकम बैक यू वॉचिंग सी एन एन न्यूज एटीन विथ मी गृह Let's now get you an update on the West Bengal Panchayat elections. As you know, the matter is before the apex court of the country with both the State Election Commission and the West Bengal government moving the Supreme Court against the High Court order of deploying central forces in the state. Now, in a major development, the Supreme Court has dismissed the Bengal Election Commission's plea over the deployment of center forces uh, in the state. In fact, the apex court has come down heavily on the State Election Commission and also said that they should not have any grievances with the High Court directing the deployment of the Central Forces in every district as it would ensure free and fair elections. And uh, they also are going to be conducted uh, without any issues in the non-sensitive areas. Now remember, the opposition parties in the state have been criticizing the State Commission's move to contest the High Court's order. In fact, BJP State President Sukanto Majundar also met with the Governor, Mr. C.V. Ananda Bose, on Monday and discussed the situation related to the violence and arson that was witnessed in the state of West Bengal in the run-up to the Panchayat elections. Supreme Court का ये जो राय आया है, भाड़ी चाया है, हम इसकी वेलकम करते हैं, सराहना करते हैं। और एक दिन पहले मैंने बोला था कि ममता बनर्जी ने एक सफर अपने एक गाल में खाया कलकत्ता हाई कोर्ट से, दूसरा सफर, दूसरा गाल में सुप्रीम कोर्ट से उनको मिलेगा। और वो मिला है आज, इसके लिए उनको मुबारक बात। आज पश्चिम � as a representative of All India Trinamool Congress, I can say that a student who studies hard throughout the year, he hardly cares about the invigilator in the examination hall. He knows whosoever the invigilator is, he is going to score high because he is very well prepared. Similarly, Trinamool Congress works for the people at large throughout the year under the guidance of Madam Mamta Banerjee. So during the election, Trinamool Congress is very much confident to get to be bestowed upon by the blessings of the common people during the poll because 364 days a year Trinamool Congress works for the people and on the 365th day, that is on the day of poll, people support Trinamool Congress democratically. Yes, we came to know about this.
that the Honorable Supreme Court, in a way, has shown a clear mirror to the West Bengal government. They have been totally exposed. Supreme Court has said that the State Election Commissioner itself asked for deployment of the forces. And now, now you are opposing the deployment of the forces. In a way, you are ridiculing your own previous stand. And this also shows that there is some nefarious design which is going on, and particularly when this type of rampant violence is very much there in the public domain. Let me bring in my colleague Ananya on the broadcast. Ananya, this was a pretty, uh, you know, a move by the Supreme Court that was pretty evident ever since the State Election Commission in West Bengal and the West Bengal government decided to go ahead and file a plea before the Apex Court against what was decided by the Calcutta High Court uh, over the deployment of central forces. Uh, this pretty much looked like what is going to come out of the Apex Court. So, notwithstanding, this is what the decision is, but anything that you're learning uh, that is going to happen concerning a uh, forward plea, consi uh, considering the, the Supreme Court has now actually capped on any further pleas when it comes to the elections, the uh, panchayat polls in West Bengal. Well, you know, already there is an order coming out of the Supreme Court just a short while ago, clearly saying that, you know, the Calcutta High Court order where it was said that uh, central forces needs to be deployed is something that is a correct move that is in favor of free and fair elections in mm. the state and uh, has been passed looking into the history of all of it. And in fact, the, uh, the court also noted that the High Court intervened into the matter seeing the history of the panchayat polls in the state and that's the reason why in fact it was a correct order it was in favor of a free and fair election that's the reason why uh, the supreme court said that we don't want to interfere into this particular order now no option is left with the mamta Banerjee government to actually you know uh, uh, not accept the central forces hmm. it would be a violation of the supreme court order however uh, what what turn, turns out in the political battleground is something different. Uh, we might have to, we, we, uh, um, that, that is something that is a matter of time we'll get to know. But a very, very important aspect of the hearing I would like to highlight. The court, in fact, itself noted uh, what is going on in the state of Bengal. The court said that, you know, uh, a situation is there where uh, people who are going to file their nomination are either not being allowed to file their nominations or... Um, in fact, what is happening is that those who have filed their nominations are finished. It is exactly what the court had said. In fact, it also said, went on to say that, you know, a holding election is not something that is a license to go on for a violence in the state. And that's the reason why, in fact, the State Election Commission should not have ever opposed this order that's been passed by the Calcutta High Court because the, the whole contention of the State Election Commission was that they, it has requested four to five states to actually give out extra yes. forces to, yes. uh, in fact, the state of West Bengal, but uh, getting a force from the central mm. government from one source is something which is much more better. But, mm. uh, um, and, and in fact, the Supreme Court also questioned the State Election Commission as to why is it questioning the Calcutta High Court order when it is already in their favor itself and uh, completely holding that, you know, uh, this is a correct order. So now the Mamta Banerjee government will have to adhere to okay. it and the central forces would actually come in the picture and uh, when, when the elections actually take place. All right. Thank you so much for that, Ananya. In fact, my colleague... Uh, Kamalika Sen Gupta has also been covering the panchayat polls and the preparations amid the violence in the state of West Bengal. Let's take a look at this ground report that Kamalika has filed from us uh, from Kolkata. I wanted to contest in panchayat election from opposition ticket. But right now they can't go back to their home. They are now staying in different safe houses in a couple of districts in Bengal. These are all, uh, this is also a safe house in Calcutta where the BJP candidates, BJP panchayat candidates, they are staying here. They were not able to give their nomination by an high court order through police escort. They have been able to give their nomination, file their nomination. But after that, they are unable to go back to their own village because they were saying that it's huge intimidation and they are not able to go back to their village. There is life threat. How did you give a nomination? And why did you come to Calcutta? We were in the video of this video. But there is a lot of mafia. No one has given it. It's a sex. वो किसी को उस वीडियो ऑफिस के पास जाने नहीं दे रहा है इसलिए हम लोग एस डी ऑफिस में गए थे लेकिन एस डी ऑफिस में भी हम लोगों को उस तरफ से कोई हेल्प नहीं मिला उसके बाद हम लोग निर्वाचन कमीशन के पास गए थे 
तो वहाँ वहाँ पर भी हम लोगों को भगा दिया तो हम लोग हाईकोर्ट में गए थे तो हाईकोर्ट से हम लोग को बहुत हम लोग को राय मिला नॉमिनेशन करने के तो 16 तारीख में फिर उसके बाद में वापस पुलिस एस्कॉर्ट करके ले गया फिर उसके बाद में वापस घर क्यों नहीं जा रहे क्योंकि वहाँ पर शेख शाहजान का बहुत गुंडागिरी चल रहा है बहुत हुमकी चल रहा है And we are now getting some breaking news from the state of Maharashtra where the NCP is currently protesting outside the party office for a call on how June 21st needs to be declared as Fater's Day. Supriya Sule is also present at the protest site. In fact, the protesters have now been detained by the Mumbai, by the Mumbai police. Now remember, there was a call by the Uddhav faction leader Sanjay Rawat as he had written a letter to the United Nations uh, and it was also tweeted and Prime Minister Narendra, office, uh, Narendra Modi's office was also tagged on the letter where he uh, said that uh, uh, in fact uh, 20th June should be declared as World Traitors Day since it was the day last year that around 40 lawmakers in a political coup widely seen as being backed and funded by the Bhartiya Janata Party brought down the Maharashtra's ruling Sena Nationalist Congress Party and Congress government. That request uh, is now seeing an escalation. Now NCP is protesting outside the party office for a call for Traitors Day to be declared uh, on June 20th. Supriya Sule, we are told, is also at the site of the protest. And as you can see in the visuals, there have been detentions that have been done by the Mumbai police as the protests uh, really were ongoing. Let me actually bring in my colleague uh, Yesha on the broadcast. Yesha, the drama continues to escalate in Maharashtra. A call for Traitors Day to be declared uh, for June 20th is something uh, that is only escalating. Now we hear and see detentions that are taking place from outside the, uh, the party headquarters. Uh, yes, in fact, we're seeing that there are protests being held uh, by NCP as well as by uh, Shiv Sena, that is hmm. Shiv Sena of uh, Uddhav Balasaheb Thakre. These uh, groups are holding protests at uh, various locations. In fact, NCP protests were held at Thane NCP office. Apart from that, right now, NCP protests are being conducted even outside uh, the hmm. main office, which is at Balaj Pier. Uh, over here, there have been several uh, such, uh, uh, several workers who were detained, but we're seeing that Supriya Sule as well as Jain Patil. The signal media, it is in fact a year since uh, we saw that there was a defection in uh, mm -hmm. in uh, the Shiv Sena wherein uh, around 40 MLAs had gone with Eknath Shinde, which is why now there is a demand by Shiv Sena and NCP uh, to uh, declare this day as the Traitor's Day. Yes. Also, Yesha, we saw that Sanjay Raut had put out a tweet. Uh, he tweeted to the UN uh, Secretary General Antonio, Ga uh, Antonio, uh, Antonio Guterres and also tagged the Prime Minister. Uh, on that very post ever since this escalation really has started. What are the two factions really saying over this demand and what is the NCP's role in this entire aspect considering it was the NCP, Shiv Sena and Congress Alliance which was called the Mahavika Sagari in Maharashtra just a, year, just a year back. Uh, so in fact, yes, uh, when it comes to uh, the fact that it was Mahavika Sagari, wherein mm. NCP, Shiv Sena and Congress were a part of the entire alliance. Uh, but here, considering that uh, there was a very famous, uh, ro uh, there was a very famous uh, dialogue by one of the NCP, one of the Shiv Sena MLAs who was yes. born with Egna Chinde, uh, he, he said that it was, uh, uh, it, it was in fact uh, being said that he was uh, trying to praise the place where they were. But now there were allegations that were raised by various people from. MVA from by various leaders from MVA, mm. wherein they said that there was 50 crores that changed hands, which is the NCP is now uh, in burning uh, burning boxes uh, as an indication of Panas Koke, which means 50 crores, and uh, they're saying that uh, uh, it is because of this uh, change of exchange of money with where this government was formed. Yes. Okay. And right now, what do you see around you, Yesha? How many people have been detained so far? Supriya Sule, we were told, was also at the protest site. What about her? Uh, so Supriya Sule is very much still present at NCP office. There are various workers, various NCP workers who had uh, become violent, who have mm. been detained. Uh, so more than 20 of them uh, who have been detained. But our uh, leaders such as Supriya Sule or Jain Patil, uh, they were not detained and they are still uh, present at the party office where we see that 
uh, they're seeing the media and trying to convey what the NCP has to say on this entire incident. Yes. And Yesha, uh, the stance of NCP from not being party to this back and forth between both the factions of the Shiv Sena to jumping all guns, blazing into this entire fight has changed dramatically from morning. How does one read, uh, you know, this aspect of the Nationalist Congress Party? Uh, so yes, uh, like uh, we've seen that uh, NCP, which was, uh, which did not really want to get involved in this uh, mm -hmm. entire incident. In fact, uh, when uh, Eknath Shinde's uh, faction had uh, broken away, they had uh, gone to Goa, Goa, and then from there they had gone to uh, Guwahati. Mm -hmm. uh, when, in fact, uh, when uh, Sharad Pawar was asked about this, he said that it is an internal matter of Shiv Sena, did not really want to comment. However, today we see that there is a call that's been, uh, that has come forth, mm -hmm. and this call has been by Shiv Sena. However. Uh, we are seeing that NCP party workers across the entire uh, hmm. uh, city have also joined this protest. Hmm. And uh, you know, if you could name a couple of leaders who are part of this protest, because we can also put out those, these visuals on the right side of the screens where Jitendra Rabhad is uh, also marking that sitting uh, protest uh, uh, as far as NCP is concerned. How many other leaders uh, of significance are there as part of the protest, Yesha? Uh, so yes, apart from Jitendra Awad, because we saw Jitendra Awad's protest taking place at Thane, mm. uh, apart from that, uh, okay. at, very much at Mumbai, that is outside the NCP office, we are seeing Supriya Sule, Jain Patil also mm. a part of the protest. And let us understand that, you know, so when Sharad Pawar had announced uh, a working president mm. that was to be announced, it was Supriya Sule who was announced as the working president. Mm. Yes. All right, thank you so much for that. Uh, Yesha, we'll keep an eye on this story. Right now, we are shifting our focus to some more breaking news that uh, we are getting on the broadcast and this is coming from uh, Bhopal where all the six people who were accused and arrested in the Bhopal conversion row case uh, in which a youth was put on a leash and was forced to bark like a dog uh, have in fact been arrested. Uh, my colleague Manoj Sharma is joining us on the broadcast. Uh, Manoj, uh, this is again a very, very unfortunate incident that has been reported uh, out of Bhopal. Uh, this is a conversion case that we're talking about. Just take our viewers to the background and now that the arrests have happened, what is next? <laughs> the latest is all the six accused. In fact, the three accused, they were arrest arrested yesterday only and three more accused have been arrested uh, today. And of them, two, two of them are, they are minor and they, they would be produced before the juvenile court and one accused uh, will be produced in the Bhopal, district Bhopal court. Mm. So th that's, that's one case. But uh, what is important here, in fact, the police have been trying to understand whether this is a case in isolation or if this is a gang which has been, you know, uh, doing all these activities and trying to convert people forcefully. Because all, we have seen this video, that, that's a very shocking video where a youth has been forced by these uh, these people to bark like a dog. He was put on a dog leash. So on the basis of that video, on the basis of the statements uh, they have collected from the neighborhood, they have arrested six people. And now also uh, police have been investigating the case on this conversion line, whether this is a gang doing conversion on a large scale or this is a case in isolation. That, that's the most important point. And NSA has already been invoked yes. by Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivra Singh Johan against all the six accused. Right, thank you so much for that, Manoj. Remember, all the six accused now being arrested and NSA has already slapped on them. Their houses also have been demolished. That's also coming out of Bhopal. we leave it at that. With that, it's uh, a wrap from my side, but my colleague Toya joins you on the other side with all the news and updates. Good afternoon. You're watching the news right here on CNN News 18. My name is Toya Singh. It is a Tuesday afternoon. Thank you for joining us right here on the show. Over the next hour, we're going to walk you through all of the breaking news stories across the country right now. Our first story, developments taking place in West Bengal, where panchayat elections are due on July 8th. And multiple incidents of violence have played out in the state in the run-up, with at last count six people left dead due to various clashes that have taken place in parts of North and South West Bengal. Now, in a major development that came in just a few minutes ago, the Supreme Court has dismissed the Bengal Election Commission's plea. This was over the issue of the deployment of central forces in the state. Essentially, what the Supreme Court had to say was it came down very heavily on the State Election 